What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. But through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 136, and my special guest is Sean B.W. Parker. Sean is a British artist, musician, and writer specializing in art, cultural theory, and justice reform. He has published a number of books and albums, won several awards, including the Kessler Arts a platinum award for the a play the Wolfstadt Wire in 2020 and also for his book a compelling speech the st- st- stammering enigma in 2023 he also gave a a TED Talk in 2013. He holds a master's and bachelor's degrees in fine art from the University for the Creative Arts in Surrey and worked for 10 years in Istanbul as a musician and teacher until 2014. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, Sean B.W. Parker. Hello. Thank you. Great to be here, Pedro. Lovely. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, This is a a huge honor. Uh, we have a lot of uh, topics to uh, cover, so let's get started. All right, sir? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so do you re, 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 a member uh, when you first uh, began to stutter? Um, I... I don't really. I remember the um, anxiety amongst amongst my, uh, for my parents about something I was doing, and I didn't know what it was. And I think I was about five, and um, until I was shuffled in to see uh, my my mum's friends who were speech therapists, because she was too. Um, I didn't really know. What, was going on and I, I i didn't know then i didn't understand it it was just attention um so it was a good i didn't understand what a stammer was until i was 11 and it, when it started to become self-conscious um but between sort of uh the five and 11 i was doing lots of stammering stuttering whichever we call it uh, does it run in your uh, family are there any other f- uh, family members um who also have a stutter um, it was never talked about at the dining table, but but my dad did have a cluttering style stammer uh, where things would just kind of pile up in his mouth. He was a very stressed and tense man. We all knew it, um, and it would, but not he wouldn't block as as I have done for forty years. He would, um, it, like I say, clutter, um, and it was sort of clear there was something genetic going on, but I don't. It was uncomfortable to directly relate it to that because it's such a different style of doing things. But the the tension in his voice seemed to come from his some sort of childhood sort of trauma in him. He's a super intelligent, creative fella, but what it would mount up, and also he was quite tense, as as you can notice. And I, that might have come from his childhood, and then it, it illuminated in, in in sort of in for my childhood in a, as I say, different style, because I don't tend to clutter very much um, that I've noticed anyway. See, Apart from that, it's, it's not much. Not much. Um, um, 
my my uh, a mom she had it um as a child however as a, a teenager um she was uh, tired of it <laughs> because as you know i mean it i mean it is agitating and frustrating and irritating uh um, and for her, she had told herself, I'm done. I'm stopping. I'm done. Mm. And she did, Sean. She, as as a, a teenager, she stopped it. I don't know. She must have a lot of power or girl power. I don't know. But, but she had told herself, I'm done with it. And she halted. And it's like, well, um, I still have mine. <laughs> I mean, mm. you know, I try to tell myself, but no, but I mean, I mean, you know, that is a head scratcher because um, she was the, the, I'm only other a person, you know, who I knew that had had it. So, you know, uh, that was extremely um, interesting. Yeah. It's a head scratcher. Well, yeah. I mean, that, um, the fact that you both had and or have one, obviously, and that my dad did a bit and I did a lot, uh, it does tend to indicate something, doesn't it? And the speech therapists tend to agree with that, but we, it's also not entirely that because because my brother doesn't have one, and etc. So it's like it's not fair to put it all onto onto genetics, but there's something there, <laughs> isn't it? Basically. Oh yes, sir. Hmm. Um. So- so, have you ever had speech uh, therapy? I'm in school, and um, if you did, was it helpful? Um, it wasn't at school. It was, um, as I was saying, at the behest of my uh, parents there at uh, about 1980, I guess, when I was five. And we went to my mum's colleagues in um, Exeter, where I was born. And it was just sort of sitting there doing the ma, 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 ba, ba, ba repetition sounds. And I didn't know why I was doing them because as a five-year-old, you don't know you're doing anything wrong. So um, I was just enjoying the attention as I um, put in my book. And that, that's the honest kind of, um, when I sort of tried to think back on those days, I was getting the close attention of these two women, older speech therapists, you know, paying close attention to my speech. Where at home, my elder brother would be getting a lot of attention. I'm not going to blame any of this explicitly on him, but he was getting um, the attention at home, and so. But then I would go there and get it from them. So you sort of, but I, di- I didn't know it was about the stammer because they almost didn't want to tell me. You know, this is I don't know about the US, but here I think in in the 80s, it's all unspoken, acknowledged, and kind of tried to kept t- to be dealt with in, in a quiet sort of way. All that nonsense. So. Um, but I, I didn't have any at school. That that was my first experience of it. It didn't last very long. I don't think they bothered with it very long, possibly because of my stubbornness, which started to exercise itself then. Don't know. <laughs> and so you had uh, mentioned that your mother uh, was a a speech uh, a therapist. Um, um, how was that uh, growing up? Um, I think I've talked to her since because she doesn't often go to the subject of my stammer because it's a bit sort of um, tr- tricky because it's like a professional thing coming into the private life. And it, obviously it's quite amusing and ironic if you like that kind of thing. I, I often play on it because it's funny. Um, but, you know, that's what we do. Um, but she's kind of s- sort of said that she had learned about it all in college, how a stammer develops, what kids do when they stammer and then it started to unfold itself in front of her with, with her second son growing up and it's like what on earth um it, it, it's much clearer to me because of the linguistic pressures of our house you know when, when you look back on your sort of youth as a 40 year old you go isn't it nice and it all looks kind of sort of sepia and lovely in 80s but the reality is it was a very tense comp- linguistically competitive house the parents were competing with each other because of basic um, incompatibility. Then, then my uh, 
the brother was trying to get their attention successfully, being the older one, presenting sort of more, uh, with my presence because I was the younger interloper getting too much attention, which I can't, I'm not aware of getting. So all of these different things with a super literary aspirational. My father was a working class guy who came up to be a university lecturer, um, East London down to Exeter, all this kind of hard work. And then he gets with my mum a bit later in life. She's a bit younger than him. And he's got this young, beautiful wife. They go down to Exeter and all this tension in the house is what I remember. But with lots of lo lovely, beautiful things too. Everyone's very, very funny and everyone's very sophisticated. But there's underlying tension of like communication uh, intensity. It's like being in a in a TV studio or something. I don't know. But that's that's the the reserve. Uh, Lots of kids have much more sort of tra traumatic upbringings than me. I'm not going to cause any trauma, but that's a description of what it was like. Uh, thank you for that, sir. Um, do you have any advice for uh, parents, teachers, and speech uh, therapists with regards to uh, children who stutter? I suppose um, it would be quite kind of sort of, it's a simplistic advice, but I, I suppose it bears repeating is to give them the space to say whatever they need to say. Um, I'm a little more skeptical of that advice in adults because, but that, that wasn't your question. So when it comes to kids, give them the space, give them the time uh, and um, uh, don't, if it's, in a group, don't obviously uh, make it too obvious that you're giving them the time because of the stammer. Hopefully, it will be obvious to the other kids. Um, and uh, and if things don't go away, they usually do go away. Of course, we should always we always remember that with these it, this this work that we do. The, the vast majority of kids do stammer. It goes like like with your mum, you know, and things. And but they should be given the time and if they don't eventually to be sent to a speech to the therapist or whatever they're calling themselves these days because they don't always like to be called therapists do they um and even if it does happen it's by no means the end of the world because you get to a place where you can handle it you know and but to give it some patient attention as soon as you can for sure and that is a great advice, because I mean, um, I mean, uh, growing up, ooh, <laughs> um, so, um, I um, might thought that I was the only one in my whole school. I thought I was the only one, and so, um, um, I thought I was a broken, a damaged, and so when I went, I'm um, into. A speech a therapy in 1975. I was uh, five years old. The whole goal it was to to have me talk like everybody else, and that, um, in my eyes, um, it had re I've been forced that you know I'm broken, you know that I'm damaged. Mm. Uh, later on in a speech a therapy in my uh, 20s, um, they actually had uh, tackled the, um, the uh, mental health aspect. And that was awesome. How to handle, you know, all of the bullies, and the pressure, how to handle the darkness. I mean, how to handle a whole bunch of stuff. So I wish I had had that years ago in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that back then. Cause I mean, I mean, I mean, school, it was, uh, for me, it was horrible. And so I want to ask you, sir, how was your school um, experience with having a stutter? Not ideal. Um, the early school, uh, uh, primary school, not prime, uh, infant school, we call it here, 
Um, I, I can't remember, so I won't bother with that. But, uh, but at, between five and 11, you go to primary school, and that's where I would have had that speech therapy. I honestly don't remember any explicit bullying um, at that age. Maybe it was happening over there in the playground. I'm sure it was, but it wasn't. I don't know. I've never been a particularly kind of uh, paranoid um, person. So, But I am aware from time to time when it does happen. Because basically at 11, my parents split up and um, we moved to Carmarthenshire here, which is in uh, uh, South Wales. So we went from Devon, as I was saying, Exeter there, up to South Wales, which is it's another country in Britain. It, um, you know, with Britain, it's divided into four or five countries. Four. So, um, but that they're not, you, you can travel there. It's sort of like going between the states. Um, for your those listeners, and when we were there in 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 South Wales, um, they compounded the uh, the otherness of being English, um, which is a strange thing that they were all Welsh, and we're not about to say they were being racist, but they were othering the incomer from England because England has been seen as a historical oppressor of Wales, so this oppressor is coming over the border. Um, tall, you know, nothing wrong with him physically, except he had big ears. But then what did they quickly notice? Oh, he's got a stammer. Perfect. So I, I gave them a weapon to beat me with for five years, uh, which I didn't know. My parents didn't know. or care. They, they were busy splitting up, you know, not worrying about my come and go stammer. And it was come and go because I kept, kept pretty quiet back then. You know, I didn't, it wasn't too obvious when you don't speak too much, is it? So, um, but then, obviously, when you're there in Wales, at 11, 12, it's all about sport. So quickly, I'm like, right, better get good at sport. So I became quite good at rugby on the left wing, running fast down them. Um, like being a wide receiver. Sorry, I'll stop being patronizing to your American audiences. But it, there's a wide receiver like um, position in, I love American football. That's why I say that. And, and so... I got good at that. So they would say, pass the ball to Parker. And uh, some, some other people would say, yeah, Papa Parker, all that kind of thing. And it's like, um, but the fact is, I've they've never been explicitly bizarre about my stammering. There was a bit of bullying, but nothing I would ever amplify to being, oh my goodness, I'm being bullied about this. I was doing the bullying to myself because I was going, like you said, am I broken? Well, I was, or the, the speech pathology was. And so then it's like, well, there's something wrong with it. And despite the fact we're supposed to be proud of the stammer, I get that. I appreciate it. I do my best. But the reality is, too, I'm slightly happy when I'm more fluent. So I got to acknowledge that, as I do in the book, those, bringing those things together into a happy place. So, yeah. yeah. A school, I mean, um, you know, when I was, you know, uh, growing up um, in a school, um, the uh, bulk of it, I was um, isolated because uh, no one wanted to um, hang out with a kid who could not talk. Mm. And you were talking about sports in school. Well, in high school, there was a group th- the uh, drama people and you know they had asked me would 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 i like uh, to uh, join them and it's like well you know i have a stutter They're like we don't care and i'm like what <laughs> i mean i mean everything was like what um and so they had a, a, a welcomed uh, me in. And I mean, you talk about a group of people who were 100% supportive. I mean, I mean, if ever um, I was having an issue and it was every day, uh, you know, uh, they were there. Um, you know, uh, they would. Uh, take the time, you know, uh, to just 
you know, I'll be there and, you know, I, I listen. Um, and that was huge. I said, no, I am all in. I am all in. And then they they had asked me, would I like to be in a play? And so mm. I don't have to tell you, if you are with a bunch of people who are 100 percent behind you and supportive and they lift you up it's like sure i'll do it but let me tell you sean when i walked home that day what have i done (laughs) (laughs) what was in my head that i told them that i would be in a play and so then the uh, day after i went back and spoke uh, to the uh, coach said look look um, you know, I made a huge error. I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this. And she told me, you're going to be wonderful. And she handed me the script. The uh, play was the uh, Wizard of Oz. And I was to uh, play the uh, lion. Whoa. And so I said, Okay, I will not let you down. And so I went home and I studied all those lines, all those lines. I mean, I mean, a, for a whole month, every day, I learned all my lines. The uh, night of our play, I don't know what it was, but when I walked on to the st- st- the st- the st- stage, I was not Pedro. I was the actual character. And you have in your book, uh, which is hashtag awesome. So I, I had highlighted a part, which I think is just wonderful. So I am going to just, uh, it's a, a, a tiny part, but mm. it, okay. So it st- states On page uh, uh, 58. And so a uh, noticing th- that if we are able to slip into another character, the uh, direct responsibility uh, pathways of speech are sidelined. A direct uh, a consciousness responsibility for speech um, is averted. It belongs to someone else. Woo, Shaw. Mr. Parker, when, when I hopped on st- stage, I was not Pedro. I was the uh, character in the uh, play, and that a uh, character had his own speech it was not pedro's speech and what does a pedro do pedro stutters the uh, character had his own speech so i took on his role and everything it just came out sean everything the people in the audience who knew me (laughs) their eyes were big and their mouths were open how can he do this he can't even say his whole name But when I got Mm -hmm. on stage, let me tell you, Sean, I did everything. I mean, it was awesome. And at the end of our play, when everybody had got up and clapped and woo woo, look what I did. Look what I did. A person who could not even say his name is on stage in a big auditorium with over a hundred people just looking. Cause I mean, everyone knew (laughs) what's he doing up there. But I mean, it was an experience that I will never (laughs) forget because I felt, I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. Isn't, isn't that so interesting though? And I was, as, as you can see with the part that you read there, I've always tried to get to the heart of this, which seems to stand behind the stammer like a shadow, which is like, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
because I know exactly what you mean. And when I sing or the few times I've acted, I can do that too. If I put on an accent, you're never going to hear my demo. It doesn't happen. It goes somewhere else, you know. And that was a terrible. But yeah, you know exactly what I mean. It's almost like the old sort of uh, tie naps of Sean or Ben and connects to the current one. And that's like a very thin, difficult line. Um, which has has its own history, and it's all very, it's it's a it's a problematic history. But then, then there's another one, which is the speech that you can do now, which goes to a character that you've invented. It's much shorter, it's much more robust, and you can just become this soldier who happens to be acting right now. You know, and it's a total, it's a different person from who I am. Um, so, and that's I suppose the key of acting itself. But we're talking about actors stuttering, which is a entirely, you know, I talk about it in there, don't I, with the Black Adder and Bob and things. The Rowan Atkinson is the country's most loved comedian with a stammer as intense as both of ours or anybody's, you know, and but you'd never know it. And it's like, um, it's still fascinating. And the science hasn't got to it because it's as weird, I think, as I'm talking about with these synapses. Not a doctor, you know. <laughs> See, and and I, um, you know, I don't know how to put it into words, but when I be be um be um behind me, I have a little a corner, and that is where I do all of my of uh, the uh, voiceovers. Um, I am a a voice actor. And so, you know, whenever I have a script and, you know, I'm in the, st- the, um, in my st- st- studio, I have on my, um, headsets and, you know, I mean, I have everything on and I don't know how this happens but when i hit record there is a switch in my head and it gets turned on and i kid you not sean bw parker when i read i mean everything comes out and after i hit st- stop the switch it turns off and here is here is the odd part uh, whenever I am doing a, a cold read, you know, uh, with a coach or a, uh, or, you know, a, a, a voiceover, a producer, I mean, cold reads are horrible, Sean. I block mm-hmm. and I repeat, my eyes get all closed. My arms go everywhere. <laughs> you know, I have it in here, but it won't come out here. However, if I'm in there and I have everything and I hit that record button, switch goes on and I am in actor mode. Uh, when I was uh, growing up, the only thing that I had going f- uh, for me, it was my um, imagination. It was the only thing that kept me going all those years. All those, and so I mean, if I am on stage, or you know, if I'm doing a a voiceover, it is pure magic, and I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I mean, it's hard. To, <laughs> it's hard to put it into words, but I mean, it's just you know a pure magic. So I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it is just interesting. I know, I know exactly to which you refer. You know, it's it's um, it's amazing, isn't it? And just just to drop in, like with the headphones and stuff, and uh, I should probably have my you know my own on now. But the times that I've um had them for doing interviews or or also in the recording studio singing, uh, um, they short circuit the stammer to a very fascinating degree. It's like it's it's almost like the things you have behind the ears that they have, which is the feedback um thingies whatever they do i've never used one but i know they can be effective and i get the same thing with headphones 
who probably almost wouldn't hear me stammer at all if we did this entire thing with them. And then if you go into the acting, you've taken a bit more of it away as well because you've gone to the short synapse with the headphones on and you know that you're sort of doing this job that, that you love and it's and it, you're able to interpret a character rather than be expressing yourself to, you know, the world. Put all that together. Yeah, the stammer drifts away, doesn't it? And um, it, it must be this must be absolutely fascinating to the speech pathologists. And I, I, I wonder, they'll probably have a, have a drug that they can come up with to switch it all off, but I don't know if I'd take it. It's, it's yeah. much more interesting to find out, isn't it? Yes, yes. And and um, so here here is, you know, you know, uh, one of of the the uh, best uh, byproducts of having a podcast by a person who has a stutter for people who have a stutter. There are uh, programs in co uh, colleges in speech uh, pathology. They have m on their um. Uh, 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 what's it called? The um, the um, um, syllabus. They have my a uh, podcast on there, and I'm like, wow. I mean, that is like a huge honor because 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 I talk to people like you who are awesome from all over the world, you know, and we talk about our journey, you know, our challenges. And our uh, triumphs. And so mm -hmm. I get a ton of email from speech a therapist are thanking me for the podcast to help them. And I'm like, woo, it's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, Sean, I want to. Change a gears a little bit. I want to talk about our jobs. Now, mm. I know in your book, you talk about a, a particular situation. However, I want to hear from you. A job wise, had you ever experienced discrimination because of your stutter yeah um mm. i'm actually uh, i'm originally called ben that's how i was um i wasn't christened but but my parents named me ben i wasn't christened because my parents were hippies basically and they were you know not into all that kind of thing we'll let him decide when he grows up <laughs> so i decided my own name because um i couldn't say ben for years growing up, it's a plosive, but, and it wouldn't come for years and years and years. Uh, so I put, when in 1995, I was working for MFI Carmarthen Centres, which is a furniture store here, and I have to answer the phone and say, good afternoon, MFI Carmarthen, Ben speaking, how may I help you? Which was the patter that one does. And um, I was doing this, but I perfectly enjoy for furniture sales. I like wood and things like that so i was happy doing that um scratch polishing but then i couldn't say ben so good morning good afternoon and getting the tension that you have and it's awful you know i can take i can, can make some fun now of it in a sense but when you're actually going through it is ah uh, you know um so i i talked to my boss one day there, he um, took me aside and said, uh, we see you have, have some problems sort of saying your name. I'm like, no shit. Yes. And, and he's like, um, um, would you like to change your name for the purposes of work? And uh, I'm like, there's two things about this. The first one is it sounds really abusive and terrible and how dare you sort of thing. And the second one is that I felt a massive relief. I'm like, what a good solution. I'm like, hmm, well, okay, let's, let's think about this because I'm a, imaginative kind of bloke i'm like there's seems like a solution to me so i went home that night and talked to my then wife who got married young about 20 and um i said what do you think she's like um do whatever makes you happy so i um 
decided to add Sean to the start of it, but partly because I can I could slip it out. Sh was an easier sound then. Now, now, by the way, it's more difficult to say than Ben. So that's sod's law for you. And yeah, fantastic. Um, and I got some Irish blood, and so there's there's a there's a reference of having having some meaning there. It's the Irish form of John, of course. So I put it onto the start of my name, Sean Benjamin William Parker, which seems sounds far too long and posh, but it's all because of pragmatism. And it stuck. They appreciated it at work. I could do this on the phone. Good morning, MFI Kamarthen, Sean speaking. How may I help you? Um, so it was a tool. It really upset my mum. She's like, I chose that name for you. And I'm like, mum, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the fact that I can't say it. And she's got used to it now. Um, basically, in the family, people still call me Ben, in the close family. But everyone that I've met since 1995 calls me Sean. And it's um, and I've, so I've added it to, my, to the writing name, which is the most important part of the name these days because it's how people you know your work so sean bw parker i get it all in there and um if it all seems a bit too much well that's the story behind it see and you know had that happened you know uh, to me because you know i you know i stutter on every letter of the alphabet and i'd be like I would go home and no, okay, this, no, 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 that, but maybe this, but it, and so I mean, it's just you know, your 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 head just goes, and so I mean, because um, I mean, um, all of my jobs, you know, uh, growing up, I did the, the uh, data entry because you don't have to have any, you know. Uh, people um interaction you know all they do is hand you a stack a stack of work to you know have it put into the uh, computer mm -hmm. and so you know uh, that is what i did and so you know a uh, later you know i had to have a job that that had a, a telephone and i mean i don't have to tell you the uh, telephones are just hard i mean they're just super hard i mean i mean um uh, there was a guy and so i mean he i always have it in my head um i tried to make a, a telephone call and i mean i had a block and repetition and then the other person on the other end had told me to hang up and learn how to talk Ooh, let me tell you sean I mean, that just, I mean, it brought me down. It brought me down. You know, however, I had told myself, I need to do this. I got to do this. And so what I did was I bought a phone, a, a corporate a telephone that we had in my office. I bought one off of um, eBay. And so what I did every day for half a year was I practice. I didn't have it all plugged in. I just had it on top of of the bed. And so I would, you know, a, a practice a calling and then also, um, you know, a receiving calls. So for half a year, I did it every single day. I practice, I practice, I practice. And let me tell you, at the end of the half year, it became a boring. I mean, I no longer had anxiety, apprehension, or fear. I mean, it just became extremely boring. And so, you know, uh, when I had to do it in my office, you know, it rang in my heart. It was okay. It wasn't hurting or beating heavy, you know. Um, and I picked it up. Hi, I'm Pedro Pena. How may I help you? And it's like, woo, look what I did. However, <laughs> it took half a year. It took half a year. But I mean, yeah, the uh, telephone is, I mean, it's just, whoo. I mean, it's just hard on everybody. If you are, um, um, you know, if you have a a stutter, I mean, you know, it is a hundred times harder. So yeah, it's rough. Yeah, it, yeah it's rough. Completely. Um, you, 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 you've just kind of alluded to a, to an interesting point, which is, um, it's good old 
practice sometimes, and I know it's um, unfashionable, etc. Practice does actually. The conclusion I've come to at 48 is that speaking helps the stammer get easier. So if the stammer doesn't ever go, I'd almost not want it to because it's so in, in core part of my personality. You know what I mean? It, it's always there in the back. But I've got it to a place where I don't care anymore. And that was always the aim, really, because it's the stress that makes it. And so, as you say, the more kind of the podcast I do, the more I answer the phone, I get a bunch of calls a day these days and I just answer and chat. And a bit of stammering, but it's never at the top of my mind. And between 14 and 34, it was always at the top of my mind. And that was miserable, you know, even when I was a teacher, it was like, but uh, yeah. So, but, but the practice of speaking is actually the best of all the advice I would give to any SLTs. And however, you know, this generation, what this generation, blah, blah, but people don't like to practice anymore. They don't like to do something as an exercise. You're exercising the tongue and the, and the, and the muscularity. It's going to work at some point, as I think you're, you're pretty much indicating, you know, just all that time of practicing. See, and, you know, you bring up a very good point because a mini coach will tell you if you want to get better at anything, you need to practice. And so... Um, you know, um, I have a a, vo a a voiceover, you know, a coach, and she had told me that if I want to get b better, I have to read out loud um, every day for at least half an hour, at least half an hour. So I know that. A st, you know, st, 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 stuttering is so um individualistic. I mean, you know, there isn't a a a a cookie cutter, you know approach uh, to it and mine i mean um it it is 100 percent unpredictable i mean i don't have any control it comes whenever it wants you know to uh, come out and when i read out loud every day or half an hour um it does a pop up. However, I have noticed that I have that I have made um improvements in my a uh, voice I'm um, acting. So I mean, it's a head scratcher just all the way around, Sean. It's a head scratcher. <laughs> it, it, I completely hear you because. Of the moments of fluency that, that we both have, they just chat away. I mean, I'm not massively happier then than I am when I'm stammering, by the way. I don't want to figure out that, like, I'm so gloriously happy when I'm fluent. It's not the case. It's just, it's absent. So it's just easier, you know. But then you, the older I get, the more unusual um, proper blocks are. So when they do happen, it's like, oh, my goodness, that was like being 15 again. You know, it's that kind of, that's that's the interesting thing about it. But I'm aware it's becoming a relic, you know, and it's that's why this kind of conversation is so good, because I think that the listeners can see or hear or whatever that um, which sort of cheerful people, cheerful, creative people with this weird thing going on that we don't quite understand. And that's exactly how the speech pathologists see it as well. So we're kind of but it doesn't kill you. Hopefully it doesn't kill you anyway. I mean, it's just you. Yeah. It's a character forming as well, as as my father probably once would have said. So you keep that in mind too. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you are right, sir. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, get to the army. Okay, now, um, I want to talk about, um, um. Okay, you had a, a career in which 
in my eyes, is the most um I'm extroverted one for <laughs> a person who has a stammer or a stutter. You were a, a teacher. Uh, tell me, how was that um, experience? Yeah, um, I had always nurtured a desire to be a teacher, probably coming from my dad being a university lecturer with his kind of clustering. So it was um, not beyond the realms. Um, but my block put it beyond my, it's like, no, no way, no way. Um, impossible. At the age of 29, the desire to be it was really to become a teacher probably was very, very strong in me. You know, 29 year, he'd been dead for a couple of years. He died when I was quite young. So it was like, when that happens to your family, with your father particularly, or with a parent, you have a stronger desire to go and get things done. So I went to the City Lit in, in London, um, Literary Institute that stand for, and they did some speech therapy, which was very, very useful, pretty much in order that I could go, and, as far as I was concerned, that I could somehow get some tools to go and become a teacher somewhere university or adult education or even high school um so i got all their tricks and it gradually you integrate them into your life as best you can um and simultaneously the next year i moved to istanbul in turkey uh sort of um because i was bored off I, I was depressed after my master's uh, here in britain and i met some turkish friends basically got on an airplane and went to live there age of 29 with this speech therapy toolkit in my pocket and English teaching as a massive industry in Turkey, uh, international <laughs> language of English, they all want to, uh, I'm like, I um, was kind of talking to my ex uh, girlfriend and some bosses at the time, some people there, like you would be a brilliant teacher, Sean, try, try. I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Um, one day the biggest school in Turkey just said, come and do it. We want to give you a trial, come and have a go. I'm like, all right then challenge. And I went and, had my first class of uh, 25 adult uh, Turks bankers, basically, in a classroom in front of me. And I just speak to them. I'm like, let me just speak to them. And um, basically, I loved it. It was like this, you know, there was stammering, but they didn't care. Um, it, it, As people have always sort of said to me, it's much worse for you than it is for us. We don't really notice. I'm like, whatever. But um, very quickly, the class could tell that I had, had a love for English and an aptitude for it, and the bits of stammering were irrelevant compared to that. So I started to see how I spoke in those terms, and so went on to 10 years of teaching. I became very good, if I may say so myself, and requested, and I was, I was happy to be doing that for a few years. And not just English, I was speaking, teaching cultural studies as well um, for some classes, because I was in training in that. So yeah, that was a success story for a while, but it was in a different country, not not your home turf. So, you know. Okay, Sean, so I have in my hand a bonus a question because I am whoo, I am intrigued because look, I on my arm I have a bunch of goosebumps. Okay. All right. So I had lived in a uh, Turkey. Um I lived in uh, Mizmir huh. on the the uh, coast. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to um, ask you uh, this. Uh, did you learn a uh, Turkish? And did you also have a difficulty speaking t Turkish with having a stammer? I'm just curious. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't intend to even stay for very long. So I never explicitly learned it. But over 10 years, I learned it by osmosis. Um, and I, as I've seen over the last couple of years, it's stayed with me. And um, I'm still conversational, conversational understanding. Um, the speaking, yeah, it doesn't, I, I, don't have a, um, I don't have a stammer anymore in Turkish than I do in English. So there's no, there's, you know, you're thinking out of a different part of your brain anyway. So it doesn't get compounded with a stammer or anything. It's just, um, if I can get the Turkish you know, you have to remember the Turkish to be to then 
have to stammer on it. So there's two hurdles for it to jump. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay, not sh- stammering <laughs> Turkish. Not any more than I do. When I was in a, a Turkey, we had to learn the the uh, language. And I mean, I stutter in all languages. I speak English and Spanish mm-hmm. and Turkish. And so I stutter unequally in all of those those uh, languages and in uh, Turkey, you know, they had some, I mean, really hard words. However, what I did, I turned it into a, a Texas word. Okay. Uh, for example, to, you know, to a uh, greet a person in, 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 uh, a turkey um it is a merhaba however mm-hmm. i'm from texas and so you know i had it i'll change to you know a merhaudi you know and they were just looking at me like what merhaudi i said well you know i you know mm-hmm. <laughs> i can't help it i'm from texas it's what i do it's what i do but i mean it's it it is a hard language. However, I had the best time in Turkey. The people are amazing. The food is amazing. The country is beautiful. So I mean, I loved. I mean, Turkey is just awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big the thumbs up here from two Turks. Clearly, yes. Good, good stuff for them. <laughs> See, um, and then also. To have you be a teacher, the most um, extroverted job, um, because I am a, now a, a a teacher. I am a, a trainer. And so I oh, teach wow. um, hundreds of people every single month. And let me tell you, when I get on stage, I mean, I am... Um, I turn all of all of the apprehension, anxiety, and fear. I turn that um into um ex- ex- excitement uh, because I tell myself, "Look what I I get, you know, uh, to do." I mean, th- I mean, this is huge for a person that has a stutter. This is huge, and so when I get on stage, I have an icebreaker works every single time. So here it is. Hi, good morning. I am uh, Pedro Pena. Um, I have a speech impediment. I have a stutter. And so if I get hung up on any words, uh, give me uh, 10 hours and hopefully um, it will come out. And then I hear a whole bunch of laughter. And then I tell them to help me, help you, to help me, to help you. Uh, because I believe that a uh, teamwork, it makes the uh, dream work. And so I put it out there. I put it out there. And now I don't even have to worry about it. Um, I start, I do my teaching, and I mean, it is just awesome. And then I'm at the end because, you know, I teach f- four hours at a time. So it is four hours of talking. At the end, I hear this. A bunch of applause. A bunch of applause. It's like, wow, look what I did. Look what I did. Mm -hmm. And here is what I get, you know, uh, to do. And the the, the awesome part is after um, I am all done, I will have a handful of them, you know, I walk up to me and tell me that was the best training. Ooh, Sean, I don't have to tell you. I was like, Whoa, that felt good. I'm like, <laughs> I thank you very much. I thank you very much. So yeah, I mean, I love to teach. I found the joy of teaching. And because everybody, and when I t- tell you, Sean, everybody had told me, I cannot uh, do that job uh, because I have a stutter. Everybody, they had told me that. But I am 
a, a contrarian. I said, watch me. And and I mean, I beat out so many people. I got it. And I'm doing it. And it is just awesome. I love to teach. I love to teach. It's really awesome. That's fantastic. And the world, what we need is contrarians in our situation. It's so, so important. And like, wanted to just like talk about something you just dropped in there about introvert, extrovert, because um, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a mixture of both. If, uh, if, if the circumstance requires it, I can turn on the performer and I enjoy it, but I don't live there. You know, it's like a professional thing I can go and do. If, if I was to come home and perform all the time, I would give myself a headache. You know, I, I like then to be into, into the writing and the, and the detail, you know? So uh, I think people are a mix a lot more of the time than people say, are you an introvert or extrovert? I'm like, well, I literally am both. And I can't, I can't say, you know, I just wanted to, to drop that one in. I told people that I am an extroverted introvert. It's what I am. It's what right. I am. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hoking out. I want to uh, talk about um, having a drink, having um, alcohol. I know that uh, you and I are, you know, we are older. And so have you noticed that if you have a drink or two, does your st stemmer uh, go away or does it still hang out? I am uh, curious. Mm. Um. I used to drink a lot um, between ages of 22 and 42. Uh, when my dad died, you know, use it as a crutch. Used it, I was drinking a lot in Turkey and on my master's. Anyway, I, I used to drink for ages. And I've got into certain degrees of trouble because of that in various ways as well with business and things. Um, it didn't get rid of my stammer by any means but it would just relax my communicative imagination so i didn't feel like i must go and prove something to the world uh it's like if i have a drink i'll, I'll just be able to go into this more creative place of, of relaxation um which since i stopped in about oh, I, I haven't zero stop but I'm, i just don't do it anymore like a hobby <laughs> um but like a like a lifestyle I stopped in about 2017, and since then, I've realized how I'm like that anyway. I'm in a communicative, imaginative world anyway. But for some reason, the younger man, it's like petrol to the younger man, and it kind of keeps you going in a certain mad, mad sort of way. And it has its obvious goods and bad, bad parts because it's a very compulsive drug. But did it affect the stammer? It would always depend on who I was with. If I had a vibe with the person I'm with, I'd be chatting away. If I didn't, the stand would probably come out and, and it was, wasn't always their fault and they shouldn't think that, you know, but um, it, it didn't have any, it, um, that, that wasn't the reason that I did it, but it, I think a lot of people thought that, that I did. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You see, cause um, uh, when I was in my twenties, when, when I would have like, you know, a uh, two drinks, um, it was gone. It was gone. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm everything just all came out and people told me, look, you need to drink 24 seven. And so that way you can have excellent speed. I said, no, that is not a viable option for Pedro. I'm not going to do it, but I thank you for your input. It's like, no, <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a road to hell. That. I'm telling you. And so. Um, I want to talk about um, the uh, technical term is um, 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 secondaries. However, how I call it, a tip, a trick, a crutch. Mm. Do you uh, utilize a many thing to help you to get out of a block or a a repetition. Yeah, it's such a good question, man. Um, because there's this thing where if you do them, 
it's cheating somehow. And the speech therapists are like, be careful it doesn't become a crutch. You're like, anything that gets me through the day, darling, you know, that, that, that kind of uh, impression. <laughs> I don't say darling to speech therapists. Um, but what I've noticed over the last couple of years, because I go through bits and parts, you know, I've got a whole toolkit, right? So you bring out whatever's necessary there. And I definitely have a, have an uh. So I put in an uh before any kind of a problem and it reduces and I mean uh as in just an extra sound of anything that's comfortable to whichever stammer might be listening to now. So if the word therapy is difficult or if I say uh therapy, it will become much easier because I've balanced it out. I haven't I don't have the ridges there. I've smoothed it out like that. And so that's a crutch to put in an extra sound. Um and don't be concerned it might become its own block never mind that whatever whatever works for you whatever works whatever works whatever works we're all stammerers i also pull out the word visually this is i no idea how that works but sometimes in the middle of a block when it's really uh, 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 pull it out and it's like it's a very strange physical psycho situation where you can actually pull it out of your mouth and can work sometimes and my number one one, and the revelation of speech therapy at the City Lit was voluntary stammering. So, so stammer on, on the words that you don't think you will have a problem with. But as you said earlier, you stammer on every word, every, every letter, as far as you're aware. Um, yeah, that, that's a that's a thing, isn't it? But if you look, speaking is much more tiring than people realise, and with stammerers. The tiringness is much higher because you're trying to analyze and sculpt your speak as you go, speech as you go. And that can be knackering. Um, so the, the art of it and the art of getting older as a stammerer is to balance all that as you go forward. And if you can spot a problem coming, stammer on the words, deliberately stammer on the words around it. And that block has a much better chance of evaporating because you've already given attention to the things around it. It's like a distraction technique. Um, I hope I was able to d d demonstrate to what I mean there to our listeners, because all those stammers I did there were deliberate. You know, I wasn't blocking, and that's the thing to mellow it out. So those are the tricks that I mostly use. Um, yeah. So I use everything and anything, because I am at that age, I'm exhausted. I mean, Sean, I'm... I'm tired because I mean, you hit it right on the head. At the end of the day, I'm exhausted because all day long I have been uh, repeating and blocking. My eyes get all closed. And when I have a block, everything shuts down. I don't have oxygen. I don't, I mean, and, and I'm everything is, you know, I mean, it just hurts my heart and my chest and everything. I mean, I, at the end of the day of talking and talking and talking and blocking and repeating, I am truly drained. I don't have anything for anybody. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I use everything and anything to help me out because I'm old. I'm tired. And if you know, <laughs> if you can help out Pedro, then it's all good. It's all good. So, yeah, but I mean, but we are all you know, a different in our uh, journeys, it helps out me. And that's all that I can say. So, yeah. 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 Um, here is a hot topic, a question. So I got to hold it up because it's super hot. So here we go. So I ask, every, I ask everybody on my podcast, all of the answers are split right down the middle. Um, I respect everyone's answers. I just have to ask you, sir. So here's a hot topic question. So uh, do you let uh, mothers help you finish your sentences? Bum, bum, bum. I am personally not bothered by other people's interrupting or finishing my sentences. I know that's um, not a popular thing in the stammering community, but it's for me because I like to be on a level of other banter in the world. 
And that's people, I see them interrupting each other, having fun with each other, not bothering. And that's actually the place that I like to be. So I'm like, interrupt away, I don't care. Uh, the resilience of that, I find personally quite useful. Other people I know aren't the same. See, and the, the uh, younger Pedro, I would hate it. Because, I mean, it's like, look, I know what I'm trying to say. It, it won't come out. However, the older Pedro, ooh, if you know what I'm trying to say, help me, help you, help me. Because Pedro is tired. I'm tired. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't want to pass out anymore with having to block because everything shuts down. My eyes, my oxygen, everything shuts the down until I get it out. And there, there have been times, Sean, where I have literally, I passed out. I passed out because there's no oxygen heading in because I have a block, a severe block. And so, no, 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 I am at that age. If you know what I'm trying to say, help out Pedro. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but again, I put it out there. We are all different. We are all yeah. different. And so I can only speak for Pedro. And so, you know, I highly um, encourage it. And here is the cool part. When I am, am a teaching and I have a block, I will have a person from the audience who will say, da, da, da. I say, yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you. And then I keep on going. <laughs> it's exactly. It is what it is. That's that's the problem with it, is that one of the problems is that no one is being nasty as an adult when they do that. They're trying to just make their day easier to, or to or to be light about it, you know. Um so it's tricky. It's it's but it is up to, up to the individual. If they don't like it, they're entitled to be as offended as anybody else by anything else in life. But I don't want every people to think all stammerers are um, that sensitive because we're not. I mean, I'm just not that kind of a sensitive guy. Uh, I think age does have something to do with it, to be honest. But let's see what your listeners think. <laughs> All right, sir. Okay, now, um, do you ever um experience a negative self talk? And if you do, how do you handle it? Um, not for years. I mean, after you've been through a bunch of things, there's stuff. <laughs> there's other things in life, like um debt and the law and other bits of, of reality which have probably affected all of us you know grief and these things are just equal not they're equal as performative so um so uh, you know our life isn't just about the stammer that was possibly the original trauma but everything else piles into this um pile of sensations and do you let that get you down? Or just like every else, there's nothing special about us, stammerers, except for this thing that we do, the one in a hundred. But everything else is just like everybody else. And everyone's got their own stuff. So no one is actually special. It's quite an important thing for people to remember. I know in this uh, era, we're all supposed to be special. Well, I don't actually buy that. I sort of go with a no one special thing is a bit more useful. You know, so um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> um, had you ever um, experienced a negative self-talk? And then if you had, how did you handle it? Mm, um, so not very much anymore. As a younger man, I did. Like I said, got, I went to the city lit to be a teacher, to get over this bloody stammer situation. And once I got getting the toolkit that they gave me, which the two of us have, have, have got out a bunch of them in this chat, so people can hopefully go, that's interesting. Hopefully they're more well, well known there's such a lot of stammering podcasts now and just bits of information in the culture people can hopefully build their own if they can't um getting those and working out how to use the tips that we've given them into their own stammering life and to see that into their 40s and 50s that they can become as successful handsome and intelligent as the two of us speaking right now <laughs> all right that sir i think you're for that. going on yeah you're welcome it's all good, sir. So here is a head scratcher. If you are all alone, all by yourself, and you know, and you are talking to yourself, as we all do, I do it too. I'm not judging. Um, do you st still st um st do you st uh, do you, do you still st st 
st- stammer. Um, the truth is no, uh, to the point of, as in the old days, what happened over lockdown, particularly uh, over those years, is that I um, took that like as a as a second part of life to go. I, I, I'm a poet and a writer, as we'll see, and I um, started to read the poems aloud because things were so much more reduced and everything. But I started to read the poems kind of aloud because I wanted to turn the things that I write into audio books um, or something or to be able to perform or to interpret my art into um, something where I wasn't afraid of my stammer interfering with things because they're not written with a stammer in mind, except for compelling speech is. Apart from that, the focus is the language, not what I do with it. So basically, I was doing the reading aloud. And the more of this I did, the better it became. Let's face it, the practice that we've been talking about. And after 10,000 words of it, you know, you just stop caring so much. It's not the same as talking to you here, where the interaction will give itself to stammer, because I care about what you um, think of it. And that's where my stammer tends to come from. Does he understand? When you're just reading something there uh, of, of, of text, then it's about you and the language. And that's um, helped me to basically, I don't, I don't stammer to myself anymore. And if I do, the, the whole the whole thing of the stammer now is like a rump in the back of my head, which pops out now and again as a surprise. And I'm like, oh, look, oh, it's you. And that's the relationship. It just doesn't, like, it's not the black dog that it used to be. See, and I mean, I'm again, you know, uh, we are all different on our journeys. However, when I am alone and I talk to myself, I still block. I still repeat. It's like, oh, you know what? Oh, well, life goes on. Life goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were talking about um, a podcast and art and poetry, you know, um, and it's super awesome. And so I have, I have to tell you, sir, I've had a handful of a guests who were on my podcast. Just awesome. I mean, everyone is just awesome. And these handful after. I had them on my podcast. They had a created their own podcast. And I mean, I cannot tell you how proud I am of each of them. I'm proud of, of our community because we are a growing and that is just awesome. 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 And so, I mean, I am, um, I am, I'm extremely, I am a blessed that I have the a platform in podcasting to go out and talk to amazing people like yourself all over the mm-hmm. world, you know, and talk about um, our journeys. And so, I mean, it is the uh, power of our um, art. I couldn't yeah. agree more, man. It's very easy to be um, cynical, isn't it, about things, as one does when was intelligent. But the fact is that the podcast revolution and tech have been very, very, very interesting for my relationship with stammering, and I'm hoping for lots of others. The process of watching yourself talk and watching you while I watch myself talk, all that stuff has been a net positive in speaking. I'm sure speaks ther- speaks language therapists have picked up on it. I've talked about it in compelling speech, and it's um, it's almost like having the headphones on again and the short circuit of the th- it's something very very special, um, and it takes a lot of the sting out of whatever it is that we do. Fascinating stuff. Oh yes, sir. It is. I mean, it. I mean, it. Uh, it. It is awesome. It, I mean, it, you know, it's just awesome. So here is another hot. A topic, a question. If you are talking uh, to an um, individual and they ask you, uh, what is your name? And then you have a block, but I'm not talking a block. I mean, it's a block block. 
Um, and then after the a long a pause, the other a person um, asks you, did you uh, forget uh, your name? Has it ever happened to you, sir? No, no, it hasn't, because they usually <laughs> I attempt to not not sort of uh, mind read people, but their immediate thing is obviously going to be, oh, well, he's got a stammer, hasn't he? How am I going to deal with him? That's going to be their reaction. I don't sort of think they're going to... Um, <laughs> Uh, the problem is when you want to be on like if you're in the House of Commons or in the Senate or in a business meeting of any high degree um, you, you know this as a trainer of course this if you're not of, of for fluency then people are going to misconstrue it as weakness and that is an ongoing issue with loads of stammerers I'm sure and it's it's about the levying the level of the playing field that we talk about it's like once you've done to joe biden the amount of stick that he gets online for his speech um when people have and there's hate and stuff going on of course about it because it's a political year but whatever american politics um we don't have a stammerer in charge of britain at the moment uh we have had in the past with winston churchill um and now and the thing is, he makes gaffes, and I can see him trying to, as an 80-year-old, um, trying to put in word replacements. And he's been honest about that in speeches before. So whatever you think about his politics, however evil one might think him to be, the fact is he's a stammerer um, delivering at a high level, um, as in the highest level. And that is a – but the critics and the satirists forget about that. And every time they do, I say, you do realise you're taking the mickey out of a stammerer here. They're like, oh, it's got nothing to do with this stammer. And I'm like, yes, it has. But then what you do is you're bringing up a conflict. So, But this conflict is a massive part of what I do in cultural theory writing, which is actually my real thing, you know, and that's robust. That's like the MASH report. That's like the Daily Show, people going at each other in a real way, um, as opposed to our trying to understand stammer on this show. If we were doing another show about politics, the conversation might not be quite so nurturing you know it's people going at each other so that's the kind of area that i find really interesting now as in i can't imagine how that that relates to whatever question you just asked me but i, I think i was pretty much on the line of it wasn't i <laughs> i'm not sure you did a, a great job sir all right awesome awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's all good it's all good all right so, mm. All right, so here here is a big one. So, how do you f- feel about the uh, representation of people who stutter in the the media? Uh, yeah, this this is a question that that appears to come up uh, from time to time. Um, Stammer here, the organization, the British Stammering Association, who are very active, very cool, very good fun and lovely people. Um, yeah, are um, they seem to be upset about how people are represented in the media sometimes. Um, I don't know if if you know a fish called Wanda, the film. Uh, does that ring a bell? A little bit. Uh, Mr. Michael Palin, a brilliant comedian here, was a very, very famous stammerer in that and he turns it to comic effect and um i found it hilarious at 14 i still find it a hilarious show have a look when you can um it's difficult because the stammer gets him tortured by this other guy but it's done in a comic way and he eventually turns around and basically kills his torturer who's torturing him for stammering so it's pretty dark stuff but you wouldn't think it from watching it it's such a hilarious black comedy film spoiler in there wasn't there um but He's a high-profile representative in the media, but after he received uh, massive criticism from the likes of Stammer back in the 80s, he put all of his fee of the film into the Michael's Palin Stammering Centre, apparently, and built that place, uh, which has done fantastic work afterwards. So that is obviously good, and it's good that he did that, but people shouldn't be... um, 
I, I think anybody who reads the work that I do and the chat I do on this subject is that I want us to be more robust um, and to have a bit more humour, but I don't want to put that in a... I don't want to take away anybody's power by doing that. But I, like I say, it's a really difficult one because the disability that we have, if we even consider it a disability, I don't even... I use, I'd spent some time on the forms going, yes, I have a disability. Now I've gone back to saying, no, I don't. It almost feels sort of uh, the fraudulent, but I can't pretend that this now stops being in the way of anything. So it's like, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've had a go answering that one, I think. It's all good, sir. It's all good. Mm. Thank you very much. And and so you had, um, in a, a roundabout way, had a um, answered sort of kind of the other hot topic a question i ask everybody on my podcast all of the answers are split right down the middle i respect everyone's answers i mean and so here we go sir do you uh, consider stuttering as a a disability mm. um it disables. So to that extent, yes, it disables. Um, does that mean I consider myself a disabled person? No. So the stutter does disable one's speech from time to time, but it's so unpredictable, which is your, your perfect term, and so malle malleable, permutable, it can get better with the work you do on it. Loads of disabilities aren't like that. And it's so, it's got its own life force, which is what I try, tried to put in that book. And also, you can have the stammer and everything else be absolutely fine, normal, straight, you know, without any other, you know, kind of com com comorbid situations going on. Uh, you seem like a perfectly cheerful chap. You know, I am, and, and almost every other stammer I know is. They just happen to do this thing. So it doesn't feed into other things the way lots of other disabilities do. So it's what stops me doing that, going down that line, is to take away from more intensely disabled people, I suppose. I don't know. I don't. I, it's, it's a really difficult question, but I, that's my answer to it. Uh, thank you, sir, for that. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, talk about your uh, a career path. Uh, did you think that your stammer might um, hinder it in any way. Uh, that was that was a teaching that I talked about earlier. Um, I could see it hindering it big time, so I did something about it, I guess. Um, I'm skeptical of the term career path because I'm an artist first, and th the terms career and artist don't really go together. You know, I do what I want and how I want to express. So, um, and that exists without the stammer, outside of the stammer. It's, um, I have a need to communicatively create, whether it's paintings or books or something like that, and that might come from not having been a, uh, able to communicate myself as a child properly. It certainly didn't hurt it because I think you store up quite a lot. And I'm a long-termist, so I store happily, and then eventually in time it comes out as some sort of a production line of ideas inside me into the world and that's actually been my superpower <laughs> it's just something that i enjoy doing you know and, and the world enjoys me doing it and that's how this book came out over covid time turned this out into what it is and almost everything i do is like that and it's um with the comparatively fluent speech now compared relatively it, um that's also a process of the long-termism you know which is anyone listening to us of interest here if they have the long-term thing inside them that is a real benefit so you know hold on don't worry keep going and it'll turn itself into something fine eventually you don't know what it is the thing i like about career paths is you never quite know what it is because i didn't think it would quite be exactly this when i was 17 you know just is what it is i thank you for that sir i thank you thank you mm. uh, let's uh, talk about a dating because you know as you know a dating is 
you know, hard for everybody. However, if you have a stammer, it's a little bit more difficult. How did you navigate a dating with having a stammer? Uh, yeah, this is a funny word in English dating. Um, I don't think I've ever been on a date in my life is, is the thing. It's, uh, it's a thing you see on TV, like first dates and things like that. But uh, I come from a kind of background where people just meet by accident or by random, not by let's go on a date or I think <laughs> because the contrivance of that is impossible for me to bear. You know, oh, we're going out to see if we fancy each other um, is how it seems to me. Um, I'll tell you what, though, to get to the heart of what I think you mean is that my. Firstly, girls tend to go, isn't that cute? which is fine. I don't find my stomach particularly cute, but people have said that. It's like, it doesn't, whatever. But um, much more interesting is that I find myself stammering less when I'm on the um, flirtatious or the, you know, talking in that, that kind of ro romantic way. It comes out when I'm trying to be serious about something or trying to communicate something serious. When I'm being like that, which is a different kind of communication, charm and all that kind of thing. Um, I seem to sum up less, but it's not it's not any less unpredictable than anything else we're talking about. You know, it can drop in at some point and then she go, oh, that's so cute. So cute. That nightmare. You know. Dating though, we, we, I don't do that. I've never, I can't remember ever having dated. I've met people, of course, but not dated. All right, sir. I thank you for that. Okay. Now we will talk about all of this, all this new, a voice activated a technology. You have Alexa, you have a Google Home, and you have Siri. Do, do you do you do uh, you think all this new uh, a technology is helpful or hurtful for uh, people who stutter? Uh, I'm <laughs> I have difficulty keeping up at the best of times. It's hard enough for me to turn the laptop on. Um, go online so i'm like i i i don't think i've used a voice activated thing yet i i don't have any um like we were just like a question ago we were talking about the positive thing that text had on the stammering like podcasting and things um that leads me to think that it could be better than worse because having this relationship with her i mean i'm just as likely to stammer talking to google than i am talking to you so God knows why that is. So it's just, you know, that kind of relationship between does it understand and does he understand is exactly the same sort of thing. Um, I, I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. I'm, I'm hoping we don't set off any any alarms or sort of do, 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 or nuclear w w w w weapons or anything like that, you know. But I, I hope not to, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was my stomach. <laughs> yeah, um, um, I, I always have, I have just a, a, a difficult time because uh, they don't give you time uh, to respond, and so you know, oh. you know, am I here? Um, you know, um, I did not hear that, or you know, I did not get that. You know, it's like, blah, 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 and so I just, you know, um, I see. That's what it, yeah. mm. however, um, there are two universities here in the States and they are in, in the uh, process of, of uh, creating an app to help people who stutter on the uh, Google home, you know, I'm, um, and the um, Alexa, and then also Siri. So you know it. You know it is out there. You know it is a uh, coming uh, down the pike. So yeah, I'm just curious. I didn't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Let's see what they do. Here is a. Ooh, this is a a deep one. A deep. A question I ask everybody, and then again, all of the answers are split right down the middle, and and um, I respect everyone's answers. So here we go, sir. 
So do you think that it is okay to st- to st- stutter or is it important to keep ch- a chasing the uh, fluency gods? Fluency gods. Yeah, I uh yes, I I also attempt to talk about this in compelling speech and it's a great question. But in my wheelhouse, as they say. And like um accept the fact that you <laughs> thank you. Accept the fact that you stammer and stutter. It's a part of you, a part of your life, but it's not everything that you are, and it it, it only contributes to identity as much as you want it to. Um, and at the same time, go towards fluency um, if that's what you want. And let's be honest, most people do. And let's not avoid that. Um, those two things can live together to accept yourself as a stammerer and to want to get better, um, to be more, more fluent. But as as we've, pro- we've headed towards for this whole chat is that stammering whilst relaxedly speaking is absolutely fine if you can stammer stammer away and it not be much of a big deal that is actually my ideal because all sorts of um positives go along with stammering in my appreciation of it It, you know the sensitivity the openness vulnerability these things have become positives over the last two decades and i think that's generally a good thing you know because openness is good It, it can't help but be good and that's a bit of a threat to some who, who like well, you should get over it, you know. Well, I I'll get over it for you, and or you know. But yeah, to stammer is fine, and to try to get better is fine too. Awesome, sir. Um, I thank you very much because you know, um, I believe what you believe um you know i am at a point where you know i have already um embraced it um however if anybody if you want to go you know the uh, route of having a, a device or you know you know um 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 or whatnot then you know that is a your a journey and so you know uh um, I respect the uh, path in which you have taken and so yeah mm. I mean it's all good it's all good whatever works I, I mean you know uh, you do you it's all good you do you so yeah, yeah. So here is here is another one. Ooh, this one is a good one. What has y- your st- scammer taught you? Yeah. Um the gift of patience, which I think's there in innate anyway, but um understanding that uh communication is is all kinds of different things. Um, definitely that. Um, a really interesting nuance to that question is um, how, when you're fluent and or your speech pathology is developed as 99% do and it has no issues, and good luck to those people. Let's not be un- unkind. You know, it's like um, their lack of understanding about what actually happens is the same as my not understanding what happens when an epileptic person has a fit or something less serious, not serious, but, you know, people have things that happen to them and you can't understand what's happening there. Why don't you just not do that? And you need to have this unpredictable block stammer uh, and to know that it's as surprising to us and can be infuriating or can just be increasingly irritating, not infuriating. You know, that's the idea, isn't it? You go from infuriated think about things in lots and lots of different ways. And I also think that the creative work that I do, all the different forms, are connected to the fact of liking of 
like we say, the storing of ideas up and then slowly letting them go is a process of what the stam has taught me, but I don't necessarily always connect those two up, but I think there could be something in it. I don't mind acknowledging that, you know. I thank you for that, sir. No, you're welcome. Um, so what advice w- w- would you give to your a younger s- 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 self? Um, <laughs> the advice I'd give to him wouldn't necessarily be about stammering, but uh, they'd <laughs> pay more attention in maths class, I think probably one of them. Um, uh, be careful about that fourth drink might be another one and all kinds of things but um, the, <laughs> the stammering is, is is as there's not I think that's a good question because the five year old it wouldn't matter what you told him he'd be stammering anyway I think there's a lot more to our chat right at the start of this with is it genetics or is it um uh, environment i reckon there's much more to that and he'd be stammering anyway and the path it's taken is the path it's taken i'm a more blocking version of my dad i have a son who and it, obviously there's a, there's a sexual um different sort of sexes uh a- aspect to this but he's got no signs of a stammer at 24 you know he's, he's a fluent young man as is my daughter a woman and it's like they're Fine. So it's like, how much do I put on that onto my dad? I've, I've just no idea. If it is a genetic thing, it's a very randomly pinned one. The question I've got is that if they could pick out the, the gene for stammering, but at the same time, you have to pick up, pick out the gene for creativity, would I do it? And the answer to that for me is no, I wouldn't. You know, I'd leave them both in. Oh, sir. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. So mm-hmm. here is our last question, and it's a doozy. So here we go. If you had the opportunity to give insight about stuttering uh, to the world on a world stage, what a message w- would you uh, convey? To the world stage, to the 99%, um, it would be that that stammer is not comorbid. Um, what the person's doing with their mouth is what a person with polio does with their leg. You know, it's a limp. It's it's just there. It's a limp in the tongue, in the muscular. And it doesn't necessarily mean that a person's depressed, uh, introverted, suicidal, schizophrenic, paranoid, or anything else that you want to attach to it. They might be all those things, but there's no reason to think they are. It's just a thing that they're doing. Um, and to the 1%, to the stammerers, keep practicing, speaking, stammering to yourself, speaking f- fluently or stuttering. They're both fine. But the more you speak, the less stress your stammer will give you in, in time, if not tomorrow. Ooh, sir, thank you. That was a good message. Good message. Okay, now I want to talk about your book. Because ooh, I want to tell everybody, I will have the hyperlink both in the UK and in the US for his awesome book. And it is titled A Compelling Speech, The Stammering Enigma. So I read your book. I read it twice. I loved it. I loved it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, I... um. I saw my, uh, myself in your awesome book. And so um I um um I want to ask you what had um um inspired you uh, to write this a uh, book. Ah, thank you for your kind words. That's what that's entirely what I, I do this for is for that kind of reaction if it if it happens. That's marvelous, man. Um on the lockdown, I found myself isolated as everybody else did. And I um had an opportunity for, for writing. So it's like, come on, what am I gonna do? And I decided to transcribe 
the TED talk I'd given 10 years earlier, Stammering and Creativity in Istanbul, um, into a longer form book, which is there, and to flesh out the ideas and the fleshing out process and making it more than the 15 minute uh, 11 page talk into a 110 page book is would then bring in basically everything we've just talked about for two hours um the cultural aspects um a couple of techniques to get through it how it's uh to seen in culture how i uh, feel about the disability talk and the ideas of other people too so making sure they get their perspective in because i know that's an ongoing one but nothing wrong with that conversation um with stammer they keep kind of sort of saying to me things like you go for it sean you have your own opinion they're not actually bothered by my more sort of nuanced take on it so um all of those voices are good because as we've said we're all different so um yeah it, it was the covid era that inspired me to do it and also being um you know, stuck on my own and uh, so that kind of, and it became its own little autobiography too. If I don't ever get to do a proper autobiography, that one's probably more interesting than the other one that will come along. An autobiography of a stammer, isn't it? It's an awesome book. I encourage everybody all over the world, y'all. I mean, come on. I want to pull on all of my amazing global listeners. Um, this is an awesome book. I encourage everyone to go order this awesome, awesome, awesome book. Now, there is a quote. Ooh, let me tell you, Sean, Sean, I read this quote and it just, ooh, I mean, it is amazing. And so here it is. So it is on page 68. And so here it is. Ooh, this is awesome. All right. Okay. So st- st- stop thinking, anticipating, and worrying so much and start l- l- a living, d- doing, and speaking. G- go I'm into the world unafraid. Woo, Sean. Awesome. I mean, you know what? I still get it. I mean, I get, I mean, see, and, and that is where I am right now. I am going, I'm into this world. I am unafraid because I know Mm. that I am awesome. I know um, that in whatever that I will do, I will give it 180%. Because I know that I am awesome. And um, I don't have to tell you, Sean, we are creative. We are courageous. We are resourceful. And we are resilient. And we are truly, I mean, I tell everybody, I love our community because we help each other out. And so, you know, I want to tell you, sir, um, I thank you for this awesome book because it has uh, touched my heart. And so I, you know, I want to tell you, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for those words. It's a very, very touching here. Thank you, man. So um, how do my uh, global uh, listeners um, you know, if they want to reach out to you, and believe me, I know they will. What would be the best way to have them get in contact with you, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, um, sure. If they would like to come to my ex Twitter account, Sean B W Parker, um, hopefully they can get, get through the, the sea of uh, East Asian bot that seemed to crowd up my inbox and um if they say hello i heard about you on pedro's show i'll be like oh whoa, whoa, good well to say something about stammering good and I'll, I'll answer them and say hello and um if you want to go to amazon of course where the action happens they can find compelling speech for their country on there and it's um yeah sitting there waiting for them <laughs> right. by the way i forgot to tell you i'm just about to release it as an audio book i've actually recorded the whole thing as an audio book over the last couple of weeks and so we're trying to get it. So just as this is going out, probably um, it will be available as that. 
in my voice. So uh, yeah, that was quite an achievement. Quite. A, quite a oh, I happy. mean, that is awesome, sir. That is awesome. I mean, woo. Okay, so I want to tell everybody if you are hearing this, and I mean all over the world, I want you to hit those hyperlinks and get the book and make a contact because the the whole point of what we are doing is we are a, a raising awareness and sharing our journeys because i believe there's healing in sharing and so you know i want to uh, tell you sir uh, one more time uh, thank you thank you thank you this has been a huge honor I've had a lovely, um, fulfilling time to, to talking about the whole, the whole of the story. It's been great. Thank you, Pedro. Lovely stuff. Thank you, sir. And then, you know, uh, later on, uh, let's uh, do this again uh, because I have a whole bunch of other questions, and so it's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fine. Part two. Why not? Okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you have. A, a a great weekend take care be well and stay safe if you like this podcast head on over to apple podcasts subscribe rate and review thank you for listening and we will talk again